Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and today we're talking something beneficial and delicious, and that is fish, or specifically the Aquaculture and Natural Resources Program under the Northern Marianas College Cooperative Research Extension and Education Services, or CREES, which is a name most of us are familiar with. Our guest is the Extension Agent and Program Lead for that program, Michael M. Ogle. Mike, welcome to the show. Okay, uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, Good afternoon. My name is Michael uh, M. Ogle, and I am the uh, Aquaculture Extension Agent and Program Leader for the Aquaculture and Natural Resources Program at NMC Crease. The Aquaculture and Natural Resources Program, or ANR, short for short, it's just one of uh, four programs at NMC Crease. Uh, we are the informal education part of Northern Marianas College, the formal uh, part of NMC. Of course, everybody knows that that's where you get your degree and certificate program. Being the informal education uh, section of Northern Marianas College, basically we we don't uh, hold classes in a structured manner. We actually go out and visit, talk to farmers, homemakers, ranchers, the youth, and 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 anybody that's interested in in the food production sector, uh, particularly agriculture, uh, aquaculture, and those areas. Uh, so ANR is just one. The other programs are the agricultural production programs. So those guys are basically responsible for helping farmers that are that wants to grow food, uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, we have the FCYD program, which stands for Family Community Youth Development Program, and those guys, as the the name uh, says, it's basically they handle the 4-H program, which is a youth development program and uh, money resources program and community related stuff and the uh, the, the last program within the department is uh, the f- family and uh, or the food and nutrition program sorry and uh, that is managed by our current interim dean miss patty coleman and uh, other of her staff and basically they they, sh- they teach people how to you know, properly uh, eat the, the right food. Uh, so as you can see that everything is uh, interrelated in, 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 in some uh, way, but it all comes down basically to, you know, food production. So uh, to add on to that, the Aquaculture and Natural Resources Program basically were, uh, were the, the program that's responsible for providing technical assistance to anybody within the CNMI community that wants to get into aquaculture. So basically the question begs, uh, what is aquaculture? It's basically uh, fish farming. It is growing uh, fish or any other type of uh, organism in the water. So anything that has to do uh, with growing something, may may it be plants, fish, um, mollusks, or shellfish, or whatever, we're the division that's responsible for that. So just to uh, to give you some background, you know, we have uh, actually helped the industry develop in Saipan. I don't know if any of you guys uh, remember that uh, we used to have a uh, shrimp farm, marine shrimp farm over at the Sfalapi area uh, near Chinatown. And, you know, from the beginning of that farm, we were actually uh, there providing technical assistance to the late Mr. Pellegrino. Uh, before the the farm was transferred over to another business until its closure after Typhoon Sodoler uh, in uh, 2015. Uh, We've also helped develop the uh, aquaponics and hydroponics industry. So basically aquaponics and hydroponics are just ways of, uh, you know, growing uh, vegetables and fruits using water with either uh, fish waste or using fertilizer. Uh, 
And another accomplishment that we've had over the the twenty some years that we've been in existence is not only with the shrimp farm or hydroponics and aquaponics, but we also help a uh, farmer in Capitol Hill or a businessman in Capitol Hill uh, start a tilapia farm uh, that used to sell live tilapia at the Sabalu market. A lot of our clientele uh, in the past, you know, after they get into commercial production, you know, they'll sell their their produce is in the Sabalu market or in the, the Garapan public market or directly to stores or directly to people. So I've mentioned the four program areas in, in the Aquaculture and Natural Resources program, and th- that's the uh, aqu- aquaculture, which is basically land-based uh, uh, aquaculture, mariculture, any, anything that uh, plant or or fish that's grown in salt water, hydroponics and aquaponics. So uh, those are areas that we can uh, assist the public in, you know, to get to get to get them uh, started in this enterprise. Uh, in 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 a bigger in a bigger platform or in a bigger uh, uh, stage, uh, aquaculture actually is you know one of the fastest growing uh, food production sector. Uh, this is based on data by the United Nations uh, Food and Agriculture Organization and other institutions like that where, you know, whereas other food sectors are at 1% to 2% annual growth, uh, aquaculture is actually at 5.8% you know, of annual growth. So that's quite big if you compare it to the other food sectors. Uh, the United States of America, our mother country, uh, it's actually, you know, imports about 80% of all seafood that is consumed. So all seafood that you find in stores, whether in Saipan or anywhere in the United States, you know, most of those are imported 80%. And of that 80% or of those 80%, 40% of those are are grown in fish farms. So, you know, that that is just to give you a... a uh, an outlook of the scale of this, uh, you know, uh, business or food you know, production sector. So, uh, you know, this is something that needs to, you know, people should start thinking about uh, to get into because it's not going to get smaller. It's just going to get bigger. And part of the drive for that is uh, basically, you know, as people around the world, as their income or disposable income or any type of income increases, their buying power is getting bigger. So one of the first things that they'll want to go and buy is basically fresh fish, uh, shrimp, uh, clams, and all those kind of things the which can be farmed. Now, you also have two uh, staff members in your office who are research-based. Uh, what kind of research does this program do? Okay, thank, uh, th- thank you, Catherine, for, uh, you know, for asking that question uh, because I almost forgot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but so you remembered a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, it's true that we have uh, you know, another uh, two, two more staff members in, in our uh, organization, and their research system... Uh, Miss Victoria Buniak and Mr. Petrus Faimau. So, you know, so if you have research assistant, then what research are you doing? Uh, basically, w- at, at present, we're conducting a research on uh, forktail rabbit fish, or uh, as it is locally known, heating, uh, or the other species, which is sesdon. When they are, you know, small, they're called, uh, or at the juvenile states, when they are coming into Lagoon uh, during April, May, and June uh, of that part of, of that time of the year, basically, uh, th- they are called manyahak. So that's what, th- uh, that's what, those are the ones that the fishermen, the talazeru, uh, that would go out and, you know, cast their nets to uh, basically catch manyahak. So... Uh, Manyahag is, the scientific name is Siganus argentius, and a uh, common name is forktail rabbit fish. We call it heating. And we've uh, started the, the research project uh, actually in 2014. Uh, but prior to that, we gathered the community here in Saipan. And I can vividly remember that was over at PIC. And we just we call in different sectors of the community. 
so that you know uh, uh, so that the group that will make that decision to pick the species for us to uh, you know to do research on is uh, you know is comprised of different members so that everybody is included in, in included in this decision uh, making process so we started out with uh, as many as 22 species of fish and then we the group you know through our facilitation uh, basically decided to choose fork-tailed rabbit fish now why is fork-tailed rabbit fish you know the reason uh, that they the, the group chose this because there were a lot of uh, uh, positive attributes to this uh, 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 particular fish one and most importantly number one and most importantly uh, through the indigenous community where in the Marianas when when I say Marianas uh, the indigenous community whether it's the Rifalowats community or the Chamorro community uh, you know this particular species of fish always has some cultural value and if one looks into the uh, if one looks into the you know historical books that are that, that were published by different authors and you can find these books in places like the Micronesian Area Research Cent Center at the University of Guam or the Historical Preservation Office here in in the CNMI you would actually uh, see drawings uh, you know by European ex uh, explorers of uh, you know the indigenous people actually you know because they already know the time of the year uh, that this particular species of, of fish uh, comes in. So it's a big community event, uh, something that is uh, culturally important to the indigenous community. So they already know that the fish are going to come in in April, so they start preparing in February and March. So when the fish, the runs start, the, the manyahak runs starts coming in, they're out there in la the lagoon with their nets and everything, and they started, you know, uh, Pushing the fish basically to the sand, so, yeah, or or close to shore where it's shallow and it's easier to to catch for them, even without the technologies that we have now. So you know, culturally very important, because it's culturally import important. That means that there's gonna be economic importance, because you know, if people like to buy it, then you know. As a farmer of 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 uh, heating or manyaha, then you gonna you're not gonna have any problem basically selling that to the market. So if you don't have problem uh, selling it to the market, then you know there is an incentive for you to farm it, because fishing, as the name implies, you know you go out there and you fish. Sometimes you catch, and sometimes you don't, right? So there's no consistency to that. But if you're farming it, you know that if you put uh, 10,000 fish in there, you know, at the end of five to six months of growing the fish, you know, you're, of course, you're not going to have 10,000 10, fish, but at least you know you have 8,000 fish. So if you have 8,000 fish and you're selling that fish for $3.50 uh, a pound, so you just do the math. You know, you have 8,000 times, uh, times $3.50 and you you know you, there's a potential to make in one crop about you know 18 to 20 some thousand dollars so you know uh you're doing two things uh you're basically uh you know conducting performing an economic activity uh we're doing an economic activity where people eat so we're addressing the food security so we're we're covering two things with this aquaculture or fish farming enterprise uh, the, uh, the third thing that makes uh, heating a good uh, choice of species to grow is basically it's a hardy fish. Uh, it's a hardy fish species. Uh, so what does that mean? Basically, it means that if you're farming it and not all the, the, the water conditions are great, you know, uh, they're not sensitive, so they will not die right, uh, you know, uh, right off the bat or... Uh, immediately mm -hmm. so you know uh, because you know if you're farming there's always risk so the risk is that if all your fish that you're farming are dead then you know you lose money but if you have a, a species that is hardy then you know uh, it, it is a lot more forgiving so you know you will not be able to lose money so uh, 
So, you know, the things are, it's marketable, it's a hardy species, it's culturally in, important, and, uh, you know, the, the last thing that, the, 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 the last attribute that the group discussed was basically, uh, you know, it's also a species that feeds on seaweed or those type, you know, seaweed or, or aquatic plants that grow within our water. So whenever he, when you have you, when you have a fish a species like you know those uh, uh, tarakito or grouper, those are carnivorous species. So it means that you have to harvest a fish to feed another fish. Mm. But with the the heating the rabbit fish, you can feed them you know plant based protein in order for you to grow them. So plant based protein versus uh, protein from other fish like fish meal you know, is uh, less costly or less expensive than, than animal-based protein. So, because growing is not only, you know, part of, part of the thing about fish farming is you, you, because it's farming, it's like growing tomato or cucumber, the m and it's a business. The more that you can cut your costs, the more profit that you can make. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's got to make money. You know, so, yeah, so that's what you know aquaculture is is basically fish farming to make money for and when we whenever we produce on, on island or within our commonwealth we're not basically exporting money out of the commonwealth so nothing against uh, you know those seafood products that we're buying at the stores but you know whenever you buy this fish or this shrimp or that uh, clam you know that's money that's uh hard earn in the commonwealth that's going out to other parts of the world but if we can start producing within the commonwealth then we can you know uh, make sure that those money stays within the commonwealth and especially if you know the ones buying the the fresh you know uh, rabbit fish the fresh uh, uh, what do you call that grouper the fresh anything you know, especially if these are tourists that are visiting our Commonwealth, so that's money coming out of Japan, Korea, and other places. So that's a that's a net for us. So you know, that's that's one of uh, not only aquaculture but agriculture. Agriculture, if we start producing a lot within the Commonwealth, then we can you know be be bringing in money instead of sending them out. Always a good idea. Yeah. So we're doing rabbit fish. <laughs> By the way, so that's the research. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, I, uh, I want to ask you to give us an update on where you are now in the process. Because okay. I know some people, like their salivary glands are already running, uh, hearing that they might be able to get rabbit fish readily. So yes. let's talk about that when we come back. All right. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Sizu Usma'asi, Olomoy, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We're talking with the Extension Agent and Program Lead for the Aquaculture and Natural Resources Program at NMC, Michael Ogo. So, uh, Mike, you got us all excited about the potential for the forktail rabbit fish that you guys are testing. Where are you are now? Where are you now in the process, and where do we go from here? All right, Catherine. Uh, basically, where are we at? Uh, with the the research project, uh, we would have been uh, close to producing on a regular basis consistently baby fish for our farmers if it wasn't for you two. Mm. So basically, uh, you know, our brand new facility that we ribbon cut basically in January of 2017 got all damage as a result of super typhoon u2 in october of 2018 so uh, we just wrapped up construction now and actually cat no prior to uh, to u2 we actually successfully produce uh, you know the first batch of uh, of uh, manyahag or eating in captivity so that is a while they have accomplished that feat in other places in the world 
uh, with other species of rabbit fish. Uh, this was the first in the Marianas, uh, you know, counting, counting Guam. Uh, it was quite a, an accomplice for NMC Crees for the ANR program. And we were actually in the process of, you know, uh, taking what we have discovered because, you know, because nobody has done this before. What we were doing is, you know, we're basically, it's, it's a discovery in process. So uh, let me just give you some details about that. You know, uh, uh, when we first wrote the proposal and we got funded for $570,000, uh, most of that money went into putting the facility that I just des described that got damaged in, in 2018. So, um, you know, uh, we, when we got the proposal together, basically, um, you know, we, we put down on the proposal that we're going to try this uh, f uh, first feed for, uh, for this species, which is used everywhere in the world. They're called rotifers and artemia. These are zooplankton's. So when we tried that, we had some success up to the 20 days after the, the eggs hatched and the larvae, you know, uh, was growing in 20 days. But, you know, after that, they basically perished. So, you know, we, start, we started cr scrambling and, and, and trying to figure out, okay, so this is not going to, supposed to be 60 days. How come it's dying at 20 days? So what can we do? What else can we do to make, to make this uh, baby fish, you know, go all the way to the 60 days? So we we were looking into li other literature and they you know we keep we're, we keep on coming across uh, a plankton called copepod. So you know we started bringing in copepod and when we tried copepod as the first feed for the the rabbit fish larvae, that's when we succeeded mm. in producing you know the first sixty day old fish. So we were actually we actually took those. Uh, 60-day-old baby fish from the hatchery and transported or, or moved them over to our grow-out tank. So that's where we, you know, were supposed to, you know, grow the fish up to until they're five to six months old. And that's when they become market-sized uh, fish. And then you two decided to visit us and, you know. So construction is, uh, construction is wrapping up and we're going to resume uh, the project and we're we're targeting that before the end of this year because we already have the knowledge we already know what the secret ingredient is so with that in mind uh, you know before the end of this year we should be producing uh, baby fish baby rabbit fish for anyone interested in farming rabbit fish and you know based on our survey and information that we gathered you know if the farmers grow them, or as they say, they say, you build them and they'll come. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if the farmer starts uh, growing them, then I'm, uh, you know, we're confident that uh, there, there won't be any problem uh, uh, selling the fish. Wow, that's really a great um, opportunity for anybody interesting yeah. interested in uh, aquaculture out there you can contact mike at his office at nmc uh before we go i want to give you time for some closing thoughts all right so uh finene na no catering on donkulo na si jos mase na on na yam uh na empleyao ni kolejo uh jani tauto e chris empleyao ni chris on na yam no este na oportunidad e para ba in fan gaigi gini gi it's almost sure that by the Tafanguentos and Itau Tauta, Gen Teramenti Marianas con todo Guam, no the Parabain Shera, no na Esti, e para un famoxa e guian, but no Masia Hoffan na gaga, but gaga, but tenanum gihalum onum, no senior e coleo, senior e NMC Chris, than the Aquaculture and Natural Resources, no program, Gaigi. Na zalistu na iprofana zuda no na itautauta no este si man man interesao no man 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 moksa e ga aga ge ge halumanum mangayam ge campus ge astrolahi campus sinyon agangam ge dos tres cuatro cinco cuatro no ibi otsu the famaisin alokau sinya no komento sa man si Mr Ogo zani tautaunya the infa infa ma refer ko ato gita hami the tafan matatsung tayinia ibedada o pagod ang si catering na matatatsung ang gini the komekento sam 
sinya tafan mata atsung za ta diskuti hafa malago mizu za na isinya bai na zudam zu za ta azuda na ta bai na zudam zu za ta azuda i commonwealth za ta produksi mismo nata i neng kanota gini gi pa commonwealth sa hafa mon za pumara i plan pat pumara i bat kumat tunu saipan pat otron a logat gi za mariana sempi manyal langit za i antigo na tau tau ta ti manyanya lang sa hafa man hujung man peska man hano pa yal i i sabana za man man mananum za tres quattro mit ginin anai man gaigit mariana stod za anai man nyal langit sa ta produksi ning kanota pois it's again important tst shown catherine sa no ta diskukuti i ilena ilena za ni kutura gini gita nota za no antatan tati tempun antigo za ni i i zot i i zota history humanities no man kapasit na tau tau gis titafan nyalang za titafan malongo sa an an man aktifit pues no todo isya i edusya na tsotnut i tsotnut ginin i mampus mega yun nabiyay na man timang timang alalam tingit edu naman malolong wit pues an mangalalam tingit za manyonyotsuit na i nengkano na ita produdusi sinya tafan mo ano mo ano mo na giminaulik na manera pues undang kulutalo na si Jesus Masi para si Catherine za ni izo niya siyo za no estia para pa ago za put fabot no agangam za Fanei kumu gi esti i i programan Catherine sa maulig esti na programan no bonito na mensay para itaw tota si Jesus Masi. Agumas Mike si Jesus Masi. Thank you very much. And you know you're a fisherman, and when we were chatting at the cultural expo, you started telling me about all the fish and the cycles and the habits, and and we didn't even get a chance to touch on that today. So I want to invite you back at another time. Uh, to share some of your stories and your uh, your knowledge about fishing here in the Marianas, what do you think? Yeah, no problem, uh, Catherine. We're always happy to you know to uh, to talk to our our community, and I will just let me know, and we'll be happy to come over and uh, and chat with you again. All right, give us your contacts in English for those that are interested in in talking to you more about this program. Okay, yeah. Uh, so basically, the na- main number at uh, Northern Marianas College is to two three four five four nine eight you can also check us online on at marianas dot edu uh, you can get get in touch with me by email via michael dot ogo those are all lowercase m i c h a e l dot o g o at marianas dot edu you can contact directly our office at two three seven six eight four zero so uh, again the The there are two sections of Chris research and extension. So we're here on the ext- extension side of the house, and basically the United States Department of Agriculture, agriculture they uh, created the extension program so that we can help the community. That's what they're were there for, and all these services are for free. Thank you, Mike, for your time today. No problem. I'm happy. <laughs> I can <help>. tell. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest today has been Extension Agent and Program Lead Michael M. Ogo of the Aquaculture and Natural Resources Program under Crees at Northern Marianas College. They're online at marianas.edu or call the college and ask for Crees uh, Aquaculture and they'll put you in touch with Mike and their team. And And we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's show. Please contact us uh, at the Northern Marianas Humanities Council on Facebook at 670 Humanities or subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear more of our shows. This has been your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. (laughs) 